Um, so firstly we need binding targets between the developing countries and the developing countries so that we have um, uh, a way forward. But the first thing to do is to get all of the big developing countries and the developing countries on board with emission reduction targets and then we can start to think about how to include agriculture and impact the land-based sector in general. Well there are a range of different options. I mean, uh, the, uh, for, for the expensive, relatively expensive options uh, in agriculture, I think there's a significant role for research and development to bring those costs down, to reduce those costs, to make them accessible. Um, and there are a number of relatively low cost or even cost negative options that can already be adapted, adopted in agriculture, um, which would require investment and education um, and better, um, better coordination of the institutions in those re re relevant countries. And in Latin America specifically, um, I think uh, 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 Dr. Daniel Martino has, has, has outlined some of the options that are available, so those include uh, reducing the the emissions of their unit product of the livestock sector, um, improving soil carbon sequestration, uh, just two, uh, two of those. So those are options which need to be um, adopted. But again, the, the issue there is to overcoming the barriers to implementing those. So we need to have good organisation, good institutions, which can coordinate groups of farmers together so that relatively large projects can be put together to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that have economies of scale. It's very difficult for small farmers, individual farmers, to do that. So those need to come together into an organisation to allow that to be implemented. Thank you. Yeah.